the 80s, a time of booming pop culture. From Michael Jackson moonwalking into the public's hearts for the first time, Bill Murray trying to catch a gopher at the Bushwick Country Club, to Rubik's Cubes in excellent fashion. The 80s can be characterized with many words, like radical and tubular, but the best word to describe this sublime decade is influential. The influence of the 80s can be seen today in our cultures and will never be lost. Many of the technological advancements made during the 80s were influential in shaping the way that we live our lives today. During this decade, the internet rises to prominence, computers are advanced and made more readily available, and handheld phones were invented. Advancements in the telephone and computer revolutionized the way that people communicated with each other. Additionally, the mass production of computers due to the decrease in prices made it easier for people to obtain them for work or recreational purposes. There were also many advancements in bringing entertainment to the home. During the 80s, pop culture was on the rise and everybody wanted to be a part of and keep up with current trends. This was made possible by inventions such as MTV and cable television, where the average person could easily listen to music, watch the news, or watch their favorite TV show. If you missed out on a movie, you can now watch it at home with your new VCR player. All these developments influence the way that people utilize technology. Most of the advancements and concepts developed in the 80s are still in use today. Steve Jobs was one of the pioneers of 80s technology. He helped create the microchip, which revolutionized the way that computers were used. The microchip created by Jobs was used in the revolutionary Macintosh computer. This computer was years ahead of its time due to its graphical capabilities. The Macintosh was the first computer with a graphical interface. It used icons and images. Before this, all computers used a coding system. This advancement made computers easier to use and more accessible. Steve Jobs was also the first person to integrate and use Microsoft Word, a program still in use today. Releasing 43 songs in 9 albums, Prince was a mainstay in the music industry during the 80s. When Doves Cry, Let's Go Crazy, and Kiss led Prince's 16 songs in the Billboard Top 10, which highlighted the rise in popularity Prince experienced in the 80s. Born in 1958, Prince's childhood led him to the music scene. His career explored musical paths that were never before used, including overt sexuality and religious themes. Prince's style, most importantly including the song Darling Nikki, led to the creation of the Parental Advisory Explicit Lyrics Warnings on albums. Prince changed the music industry by bringing the control of music back into the musician, by challenging the large music corporations which changed the way musicians were viewed. Oprah's famous Oprah Winfrey show first aired in the 80s. The empowering show would become one of the most watched television shows and lasted 25 years. Oprah broke racial barriers as a powerful African American woman. She celebrated people's differences and inspired the youth. Another prominent African American figure of the time was Michael Jordan. Entering the league in 1984, Michael Jordan took the league by storm, winning the rookie of the year. Throughout the rest of his career, he captured five NBA MVPs, six NBA final victories, and 14 All-Star selections. His life on and off the court expanded to NBA globally as he became the face of the NBA through his clothing brand and electric play style. During that decade, Jordan off the court changed the society and youth culture in America as his Jordan brand became the mainstay brand in the athletic industry. Youth culture in every part of America looked towards the brand and Michael himself as an influence on how they lived their life. John Hughes is without a doubt one of the most important directors in cinema in the 1980s and shaped movies as we know it. He has been influential in the movie industry with his producing, writing, and directing. John Hughes is known mostly for his young adult films that shaped the teen adolescent movies and completely revolutionized coming to age movies as well. He really saw to bring to light real teenage life and focus on the tensions of adolescence, romance within teens, problems of growing up, high school, peer pressure, teen parties, rebellion, and friendship. While his movies did have all these rather serious themes, they also featured fun plots and generally strong characters. He commonly used the same actors in his works usually having Molly Ringwall, Anthony Michael Hall, Emilio Estevez, Demi Moore, and Ali Sheedy playing the main characters. Hughes movies throughout the decade contributed to the blockbuster phenomenon of the 1980s, among other action flicks of this era. Um, and he really changed the industry to catering more to younger people rather than the older generation. 
Some of John Hughes' most infamous films are Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Pretty in Pink, Weird Science, Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club, and National Lantern's Vacation. Steven Spielberg is an Academy-winning award director, screenwriter, and producer. With movies both written and directed by him, such as Poltergeist, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and many more, Steven Spielberg cemented himself as one of the most influential writers and creators of the 80s, and American history. The movies created by Spielberg are still talked about today, with some of the characters he introduced through his many successful films like E.T. and Indiana Jones being staples to pop culture. Without Spielberg's monumental contributions to the film industry, modern pop culture simply would not be the same. While Stephen King didn't start writing in the 80s, he gained popularity during this time by redefining the horror genre, by writing books like It, Misery, and The Shawshank Redemption. Stephen King can be credited in popularizing the horror genre. His success and impact can be measured by his book sales and the books that have been adapted into classic films. Alice Walker, one of the most talented authors in American history, might not be the most talked about or well-known writers, but boy was she important. She was an amazing author in multiple genres, but especially her fiction, which made her a major figure in the awakening of African American women's writing. In 1982, Walker published what was easily her most famous novel written, In the Color Purple. The novel was the first work by a black woman to win the Pulitzer and the National Book Award. The novel was turned into a play at the Broadway Theater in New York in 2005, and Walker was a major advocate for social and political change. She benefited the decade, and the decade benefited the world. The Miracle on Ice is said to be one of the most important sports events of the 20th century, and for good reason. As we age further and further away from this historic 1980 Winter Games, the magical moment is still ingrained into many Americans' heads. The hockey game, played in Lake Placid, New York, was between the Soviet Union and the U.S. hockey teams. The game occurred in the midst of the Cold War during the Iranian hostage crisis and the uh, recent Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. So clearly tensions were very high between the two superpowers that were set to play. The Soviet Union hockey team had won the gold for the past four Olympic games and they were seen as an unbeatable team. The American team, on the other hand, was made up of mainly young college players who were at a big disadvantage. Crazily, the young American team managed to defeat the Soviets in spectacular fashion. It was a very ideological victory for the Americans in the Cold War and to the uh, American public. The 40th President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, is undoubtedly one of the most influential individuals of the 1980s and American history as well. He revolutionized economics in America with his theory of Reaganomics, featuring trickle-down wealth, deregulation, and an economic boom that would last 20 years. He was a sitting president during the end of the Cold War, he had a strict anti-communist policy and leading to the eventual fall of the Berlin Wall, which was a monumental event for all of human history. Some of his other achievements are him starting his new American optimism, the decrease of nuclear weapons throughout the world, going to China, uh, and voicing uh, of his traditional American values and rebuilding the American military. All in all, Ronald Reagan was a very influential president and one that must be remembered. The 80s was a time of experimenting and pushing the limit for the rebellious youth of America. The use of drugs was one of the biggest problems created by this counterculture youth. Popularity of the smokable form of cocaine called crack rose during the start of the 80s, as it was portrayed more and more as a bad drug. The government had to step in to reduce the problem. President Reagan was the first president to create a real program against drugs. With help from his wife Nancy, the program Just Say No was created. Another way to combat the problem of drugs in the U.S. was to raise the consequences, which was done as many drug-related sentences were raised. This influence of drugs in America changed the way that people looked at them, and a time period helped spread awareness of the problems with drugs across America. Arthur Laffer was an economist, and his theories were what led to Reagan's tax cuts during the 1980s. He thought that there was a certain point in which increasing tax rate didn't create any more tax revenue because of the unforeseen variables and unintended consequences that came along with taxes being so high. Although they may be unrelated, the recession of 1981 crushed many American families. The state of Michigan was hit the hardest, with unemployment reaching 12.5% at times. Those opposed to Reagan's tax cuts blamed him for the recession. 
In the late 2000s, Arthur Lafer came out and said that the level taxes were cut during the 1980s were not what his works intended to do and likely had something to do with the recession in the early 80s. Jerry Falwell was a conservative activist and televangelist, and his major accomplishment was the foundation of an organization called the Moral Majority. Its membership consisted of like-minded social conservatives, and they started several political action committees that campaigned on issues that maintained Christian moral law. To gain more followers, rather than gathering together in support of an issue, they gathered in opposition to others' agendas without proposing one of their own. He rose to popularity with quotes such as, AIDS is not just God's punishment for homosexuals, it's God's punishment for the society that tolerates homosexuals. His work in the organization is what handed Reagan his first election, and the moral majority rose again for his re-election campaign. The HIV AIDS protests were mostly led by an organization called ACT UP. Their actions were in response to the AIDS epidemic starting in the early 80s and the government's reaction to the hundreds of gay men dying of AIDS. The rhetoric surrounding the causes of AIDS promoted violence, resulting in even more deaths in the gay community. The actions of protesters resulted in the FDA shortening the approval process for the CDC research into possible treatments. Several public figures came out in support of this movement, including Magic Johnson and Freddie Mercury. Media mogul turned land baron Ted Turner grew his father's advertising firm into Turner Broadcasting and founded the cable news network, CNN, in 1980. CNN was the first news channel to nationally broadcast news 24 hours and the first news channel to cover car chases and disasters. With the coverage of the NASA Challenger exploding, CNN cemented themselves as the primary place to get news. Turner's company influenced everyone's home, everywhere, at all times, and eventually created the more informed public we know today. Without Ted Turner's contributions, the world simply would not be the same. Space travel in the 1980s changed space travel for future generations to come. On April 12, 1981, Space Shuttle Columbia flew into space and orbit from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The spacecraft was mankind's first reusable one. The successful launch even had an effect on 80s pop culture. The group Rush was so inspired that they wrote the song Countdown About to Launch. This set a mark for space exploration for years to come. Along with the success of the Columbia came the failure of the Challenger. On January 28, 1986, the Challenger set off for its second flight with seven passengers on board. Tragically, the flight only lasted 73 seconds and the space shuttle exploded on live television. This led to more safety precautions being taken by NASA. And overall, space travel in the 1980s set a major precedent and mark for space travel in the coming years. We might not have had drones on Mars today if not for the space travel in the 1980s. On August 13, 1961, the communist government of East Germany built a concrete wall with barbed wire between East and West Berlin. The purpose of this Berlin Wall was to keep Western fascists from getting into East Germany and undermining socialism. But it really stopped people from moving from the East to the West. The Berlin Wall stayed up until November 9, 1989 when finally Eric Honecker announced that citizens of the GDR could cross the border whenever they pleased. More than two million people from East Berlin visited West Berlin that weekend. People used hammers to begin to literally break down the wall, and they became known as wall woodpeckers. Finally, for the first time since 1945, Berlin had been united. The Berlin Wall was previously the largest and only tangible symbolism of the lack of rights given to the citizens of the East German bloc during the Cold War. So when the wall finally came down, the Cold War was officially over. From the end of the Cold War to the sweet sound of princes when doves cry, the 1980s will forever be known as the most influential decade to date. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed.